pastoral oversight to them for four years. The pastor, they still invite me back. I don't go over there and say, well, you got to get out of your denomination and become independent. No. Because I look at it this way. You cannot divide the unity of the body of Christ. What you can divide, and where we do get divided, is because I'm independent, or this one's in this denomination, this one follows this preacher or that preacher. That's where we divide. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Well, I believe about the Holy Ghost this certain way. Somebody over here says, no, I see it this way. And that's where we divide. And as long as we try to work on those exterior issues that divide us, we have difference of opinion, we will never maintain the unity of the Spirit. But all of a sudden, give me your hand, brother. All of a sudden, I see the same Spirit's in Him that is in me, and that's what unifies us. We're able to do as I ministered, was it last night? Take my sword, my particular focus on a certain aspect of doctrine, and instead of that being a destructive weapon where I turn against my earth, I convert that into a pruning hook. He's, Jesus is going to deliver the kingdom up. He's going to put all enemies under his feet. How's he going to do it? Through his people. Through you and I. Don't allow any minister, don't allow any group, don't allow any individual to ever turn you against a fellow believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. Do not allow yourself to do that. When you do, you're violating His will. You're violating His will. So, then it's going to come. God's going to set up a kingdom. He's going to give a kingdom and dominion to his people, the saints. How's he going to do that? Well, he's going to deliver it up. <clears throat> Look, now. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there was loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Jesus Christ came to do this, not to wage warfare against unbelievers, but to convert to transform unbelievers, to transform sinners into saints. Jesus Christ came into this world to transform the governments that are slanted, that are, they've missed the mark. Every human government has missed the mark of why God established dominion in the earth. Because of sin. But through Jesus Christ, He's going to bring that dominion into the right exercise, the right attitude, the right purpose. You know, I left evangelism in 89, got elected to council in 1990, and some people, when I left evangelism, said, Joey discouraged, he down in the dumps. And lost the victim, that's why he's not out on the field anymore. And then when I got elected to council, they said, he backslid. <laughs> and I've got pastors that I worked with when they had nothing, and I labored with them to help them build their congregations that will not have anything to do with me anymore because I went into 
serving my community, representing Jesus Christ in the political field. That people turned against me. I had a person come to me recently, come and hug my neck and say, oh, I'm so glad you've come back to ministry. <laughs> they literally hug me. I'm so glad you've come back to ministry. What have you been doing all these years? See, we've got it wrong. We think ministry is that one who stands up and gets excited when it's supposed to teach, say, in the preaching. Because they're so excited about the presence of God. But ministry, the best way you can sum it up, is one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. <laughs> you found Jesus. You've got friends and associates in your circles of acquaintances that you can reach. I will never reach. Because I'm just a stranger. What does that old fool you know? <laughs> you. God's going to use you as the church and the pastor to equip you to understand what you are and who you are. You can go about being it.
Where are we today? We live in a time where the wheat and the tares are reaching the harvest. One of the things I heard years ago about tares and wheat, they look very similar. But one is poisonous. And the difference in their character is that harvest time, wheat will always bow, whereas the tear will stand up rigid. The wheat, the good seed, are the children of the kingdom. Where are we today? Bowing in humility, bowing in adoration, bowing in worship to the God we know is in charge, whereas others stand there not knowing what's going on. The days of those kings, God is going to set up a kingdom. He's given the kingdom to the saints. Go into all the world and preach the good news of the kingdom of God. How do you do that? Get involved. Don't let things overcome you. Get involved. Ministry of Reconciliation is not something that's done exclusively or only in the assembly of the saints. It's when you go out on the street and you rub shoulders with your neighbor, your friends, and you reflect the presence of Jesus, the spirit of Jesus to them. <coughs> on your job, wherever God put That's what my job, that's what Ernie's job is as a pastor to equip the saints to do the work of ministry. The ministry is the reconciliation of all things back to God. It's not all over. It's not all over. In other words, for our time, for this season in which we as Believers represent Jesus Christ to our communities, the world in which we live, the age in which we live. We've got a work to do for God. Mm -hmm.